The beginning of the war for us was in 1941. In their town, the Einsatzgruppen, right, the Germans would have the killing groups that would come, and they came on Rosh Hashanah in 1941. And my grandfather, Moshe Sonnenzon, my mother's father, so he was very worried. He thought that from all the contacts he had from business and what was happening to supplies in business and how the food and all the war news that he heard, he thought that, no, this is going to be very serious. And he wanted to make plans, and he did make plans for the family to escape. He actually started uh, burying his gold, transferring money into gold and hiding it in different places in the uh, Einsatzgruppen who would just really collect people from different towns, really have them dig holes and gather the entire town and shoot them around the killing. Um, and entire families were just shot and then pushed into the pit. My grandfather separated them among the non-Jews of the community. So one was my mother's babysitter. So for a few weeks, my grandfather, um, my grandmother, and the three kids were hiding in the forest. And it was impossible for them to stay in the forest because the partisans and there were so much going on that they went to the city of Radun. Because Radun, the city of the Chafetz Chaim, so that's in Bielorussia. So even though the you know, borders were always switching, they felt that that would be a safer place because they were Poland-Lithuania, and they felt that Bielorussia, Radun, for some time, was you know, a safer haven. So they went to, you know, so they went to Raden. Part of the reason they couldn't survive in the forest because um, there was a very young baby. I mean, it was my mother. She was six at the time. It was her older brother who was 10 at the time, but there was a new baby brother. Hi. My mother's family was hiding uh, in this attic with a whole bunch of other families that they knew well. And, um, you know, the Germans were coming. They heard them downstairs in the house going through all the bedrooms and all the rooms. And there was a fear that the baby was going to cry and give away their hiding place. And there are many versions to this story. My mother remembers the story that some other neighbor was so upset that the baby might wake them up and was so panicked that he lunged forward and he cracked the baby's neck to make sure that the baby wouldn't give away the hiding place. And then my grandfather said, okay, we have to escape and we have to go somewhere where we can keep the family intact and we're not reliant um, on anyone else. And unfortunately, he said, we're not going to be reliant immediately or hide with any other Jews. So he took his gold that he had in the, and as I told you, that he hid in many places and he made a connection with one of his old business associates, Kazmierz Korkuch. He was this young Polish noble, single, a dashing young man, right? And um, he owned a very big um, estate. And uh, he was um, close in age, just a little younger, but close in age to my grandfather, but you know, still single. And um, my grandfather said, okay, I'm gonna give you 60 rubles a month gold, right? And, um, and if you could hide us, then I will pay you. And he hid all the money in different places, so no one else could have access to it without it. And he um, made this agreement. In many of these houses, they had cellars, and they had caves, and they had places where they would store vegetables. They had places where they would bring the pigs in for the winter. So they had a lot of, you know, subterranean caves, cellars, and one of them was used to hide my mother, my, my uncle, and my grandmother and grandfather. So Moshe Sonenzon, which is my mother's father, Tsipora Sonenzon, her mother, and her, Yafa, Shainala, they called her, and Yitzchak, which was her brother. So they four survived in like a cellar type thing, a cave type thing, if you can imagine right, that is under the house, but the opening is really to the yard. So they stayed um, till January, I think it's 1942. In a massive blizzard in January 1943, 
so they had to leave. My mother says that that was the most difficult time. I mean, obviously the whole war was terrible, but she says that was, you know, the worst. Everyone was always worried every second someone's coming after you, and they had to hide from place to place, and you would went for days without, days without food. She said it was every day this crazy, trauma, not knowing if you were going to live or die. Second generation definitely gives it a different perspective of how they felt with their parents being survivors or how their, how it's their reaction to their parents. Remember, you know, the stories and how important also whatever you do makes such a big impact. And by hearing their stories and hearing, um, you know, how they survived and also to understand the, you know, uniqueness of everyone's life that was killed, that they're not just numbers, literally, that their names and that they're people and their flesh and blood, I think, is very important for us because that also teaches us the value of life. It's very important to almost like be her voice and tell her story.